I'm David the Good, and I'm a seed addict. 21 amazing trees you can grow from seed with David the Good. David the Good. When you think about growing fruit trees or nut trees, you probably think about going out to a nursery, buying a potted tree, popping it in your yard, taking care of it for a few years, and then hopefully getting a harvest. Chances are you're not thinking of growing fruit and nut trees from seed. And when you mention that you want to grow them from seed, people treat you weirdly. Maybe when you were young and you're like, I want to start some apple trees. I want to start an avocado. They say, oh, it's going to take forever. And that's not going to be, it's going to be terrible fruit. You get that sort of a response, right? You've heard that before. You may have even said that before. And so all the joy and wonder of starting a tree from seed, starting a gigantic tree, like this mango tree right beside me, from a seed and having it tower up to heaven, yeah, you don't get that because it takes too long and it's going to be nasty. Well, we're going to deal with these two objections and hopefully after today's presentation, you're going to want to start your own fruit and nut trees from seed and you're gonna get all excited and you're gonna go right out in your yard and you're gonna start planting stuff. So, first the two objections. Objection number one, it takes too long. Everybody says it takes too long. Well, do you expect to die within the next year or two? What about within the next five years? There are fruit trees that will produce from seed in a year or two. Maybe they're not technically trees, you know, things like papaya or bananas or whatever, but you get the idea. There are things that go really fast and we're going to cover some of them. I actually had a peach tree produce in 18 months from seed, actually make a couple of peaches, which is way outside of the ordinary, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. Now if every year you're putting in gardens, why not start a few fruit trees at the same time? Back when I was 15, I planted a coconut in my parents' backyard down in Fort Lauderdale. It had sprouted and it was about that tall and I stuck it in the ground and now there is a beautiful towering coconut palm which is quite a few years older than uh, than 15 at this point but it's a beautiful tall tree and it wouldn't be there every time I go and visit my parents house I look up and I see this tree and I go wow I can't believe I planted that but you get a chance to invest in the future by planting trees from seed and a lot of them don't take as long as you might think and there are also ways to get around it taking so long such as grafting. Which brings me to point number two. It's going to be nasty. Oh, it's going to be terrible. If you plant apple seeds, you're going to get a horrible apple. Or if you plant that orange seed, you're going to get a horrible orange. Well, that is often not the case. As a matter of fact, most of the varieties that you have today, that you've seen today, are just, a lot of them are just accidental. You know, somebody, somebody threw seeds out in their backyard and they grew this tree, that tree, the other tree, and they crossed and the genetic variation takes place and you get something different. So if you want exactly a red delicious apple, which I don't know why anybody in their right mind would, you can go and buy a grafted red delicious apple. Every single red delicious apple that's been grafted is exactly a clone of every other one. They start a tree from seed, they have a little root stock going, they may even clonally propagate it, but often you have a seedling root stock and then on top of it, you graft a variety. So if this mango here was say a Ceylon mango and I had a mango seedling in my yard, I could take a little piece of this tree, cut it in, make a little graft, and it would be a Ceylon mango from that graft point upwards and it would always bear the same Ceylon mangoes that every other Ceylon mango tree bears. So you can graft it if it turns out badly, but I've grown peaches from seed and I had over a dozen seedling peaches that I gave to friends. I had a few in my yard. Every single one of them bore delicious peaches. And they weren't all the same. Some of them were small, red. Some of them bloomed at slightly different times. But they were all delicious peaches. And um, I, I've got all kinds of stories people have sent me in on my website of trees that they started from seed. Avocados and oranges and grapefruit, lemons and all kinds of things that bore delicious, wonderful fruit. So if it doesn't bear what you want, you can always just graft on top of it. And if it does bear something that tastes good, you can name it after yourself because that's a variety nobody else has. Now, let's jump into the varieties that you can plant and how to do them because I've got 21 amazing trees 
that you can grow from seed your own self. Apples are one of the first things that every kid wants to grow. Can I plant these seeds? Well, they grow. And then we tell them, no, they won't grow. And if they do grow, they're going to be awful. <sighs> but you can grow apples from seed and you will often get decent apples. A lot of the settlers did that. Think of Johnny Appleseed, right? With apples though, there's a little trick to getting the seeds to germinate. And that is, they need some chilling first. An apple falls to the ground in summer or fall, it gets buried under leaves, it rots into the ground, maybe somebody throws the core over the fence or whatever else, then those little seeds start to chill. If they sprouted right away when they hit the ground, they would freeze to death in the winter, they wouldn't have time to get established. So since it's a cold climate tree, it needs a little bit of chill hours first, which is called stratification. And so to stratify apple seeds, you get the little seeds out of the core, put them in a little bit of slightly moist potting soil, you put them in a little baggie, stick them in the fridge, and just wait three to four months or so. They'll, they'll often, they'll just start putting roots out right there in your refrigerator. It's amazing, like you'll see little roots coming out. It's like they, they're trying to root into the ground. They think it's winter, they're getting ready to sprout in the spring. Now, as soon as you take those out and put them in pots, they often will stick up their leaves and they'll be growing and you will have little apple trees. Now, apples take a little bit of time to produce fruit from seed. We're talking six to 10 years for a seedling. It's pretty much normal. So the good news on that is that you can graft onto them and they will produce a lot quicker or you can just wait and see what they turn into because you're going to have your own variety if you don't graft. But if you do want to graft and change it, your neighbor has a cool apple tree, you can take a little piece off and graft it in the spring. They graft so easily, you can almost just chop a chunk off and chop a chunk off and stick it together. Whack! There you go! And it takes. Apples are super, super easy and they're like the beginner's grafting tree. So easy to start from seed, pop them in the fridge, give them a little bit of time, they grow roots, stick them in the ground, they will grow a top, and then six to ten years, Good job, Johnny Appleseed. Tree number two is avocados. Avocados are like one of those beginner fruits, right? Have you ever seen that thing where you take an avocado pit, you stick some toothpicks in it, you suspend it in a jar, you put some water up there, and then over time it starts to put roots down and it puts a shoot up, and then you plant it and it died? My grandma did that over and over again. It was like her backyard was like the graveyard of avocado seedlings. She would stick them in the little things and then she would go plant them out in the yard and then they would die because she actually wouldn't water them once they went out there. I really miss you grandma. I wish you could watch this just so you could get on my case. But avocados are actually really easy to start. You take the pit out of a fresh avocado and I don't like doing the whole toothpick thing anymore. You know that was that was fine in the past but sometimes they rot, sometimes they don't take. And I often have a few avocados at a time. So what I do is I just take a little flat of soil I stick the little avocado pits in there, I bury them, and then they just pop up. And as they pop up, I pull them out and I transplant them to their own pots or put them in the yard. The only thing is, you have to remember to water them. One more thing, avocados can take five to 13 years to grow from a pit, so be patient. Unless you're like my friend Eddie from Puerto Rico, who just threatened his tree. He said, I'm gonna cut you down. I'm gonna cut you into pieces unless you bear from me, okay? because I don't like you taking up the space in my backyard, all right? And if you keep taking that space up and you don't make me no fruit, I'm gonna cut you right down and you're gonna die. And guess what? The next year, it fruited. Our next tree to start from seed is bananas. Now you're like, oh, wait a minute. There's two reasons why that's completely impossible. One is a banana is not really a tree. Okay, I know that, but everybody calls it a tree. I know it's like a big onion, okay? It's like a big onion that makes fruit. So it's like big bulbs and stuff. Yeah, I know, it's not really a tree, but we're gonna call it a tree because it kinda acts like a tree, and it's sorta like a tree, and everybody says it's a tree, so we're just gonna go with that. Are you doing good or are you doing well? So, the other thing you're gonna say is, wait a minute, bananas have seeds? Are those those little tiny black specks inside, you know, and you peel it and you cut it in half and you see those little teeny things? Yeah, that's actually the remnants of seeds. With bananas, there are only some ornamental varieties that will start from seed. The regular banana that you get in the supermarket, the seeds are long gone. Long, long ago, people selected out the very best varieties, and that's one that doesn't have seeds in it, like buckshot. You know, can you imagine biting into a banana and going and breaking a teeth, breaking your teeth on a little seed? You don't want that. And the various people that bred bananas over the years, who our names are long lost to us, they selected out the buckshot seeds. 
But if you've got the ornamental varieties like Musa velatina, there's a whole bunch of different varieties that actually have the seeds still in them. People will say, oh, they take forever to germinate. They're so horribly hard. Well, I found out the trick to it. The trick is you get those little seeds and get, a, get your ornamental banana fruit, right? And you open it up, it's got the little hard seeds in it. Clean them off, get yourself a little file. Nick a hole in each one of them or take a pair of nail clippers and just chew at the edges until you nick a hole. Soak them overnight, maybe even soak them for two days. Plant them in a little bit of potting soil and put them in a warm spot. Boom! A few weeks later, you have bananas. It doesn't take the six months or a year that you might read online. Nick them, soak them, plant them, and you've got little baby banana trees you can put in your yard. Though they're not very good for eating. Did, 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 did you know that cashews come from a fruit? Did you, did, did you know that cashews come from a fruit? They do. It's a really weird looking thing. Here's a picture. The bottom part is where the cashew nut is. The problem is it's surrounded by a poisonous caustic liquid which will burn you. You can't just go to the store and buy some raw cashews and then turn around and plant them. They're dead. They're long, long dead. You have to actually get a cashew nut off of a plant that is like recent. So I actually was given one back when I was in the United States. Uh, one of my fans snuck some in from Asia in her dirty clothing. So I have really great fans, but she brought me a cashew. So all you have to do is if you get an actual cashew nut is plant it and you'll get cashews in about five years, maybe as little as three. Our next tree from seed is citrus, which is not really fair because citrus is a whole group of plants, wonderful trees, but they're very similar. The way you propagate them all is pretty much the same. This is a ruby red grapefruit, which is green on the outside because they live in the tropics. And you need a certain amount of chill to actually get the right color. And we get green ones, but it's, this is actually right. So if I take these seeds out, if you cut through seeds, get rid of those, but take out some of the good seeds, and you just take these. And now a problem that people often do, something, a mistake they often make with citrus, is to take these seeds and then treat them like they were sunflower seeds or any other garden seed. And they dry them out, and they're, when they're good and dry, they go ahead and plant them. This is a tropical plant, and these are actually made to sprout. They are not made to go into dormancy for any period of time. They are made to go right to the ground and sprout. So it's a mistake to dry them out first. Don't do that. Just rinse them off and take them and plant them right in the ground and usually within a month you'll have a bunch of little citrus. Now if you were going to grow grapefruit from seed, chances are it's going to take eight to ten years to fruit. So that's a long time. However, lemons, limes, calamondins, and probably kumquats will all grow and they can often fruit in as little as two to three years, maybe four or five. They're much faster. So oranges and grapefruits take a long time. They're bigger trees and they take their sweet time getting ready, but some of the smaller citrus will actually fruit quite quickly, and they will make good fruit from seed. You'll get something very similar that's good. I've had a lot of seed-grown citrus, and it's delicious. You see this here? This is a little baby coconut. Look at that. Look at the little root coming out of the bottom. See that? That is a little coconut sprout, and this is laying right here, and the mama its way up there. I told you I planted one of these before. And actually, if you live in the tropics, coconuts are everywhere. And you can often just pick them up right off the ground. Here's one right here, just laying on the ground that fell down the hill. And they'll grow. But if you have a dry coconut, and you want to grow it into a tree like that, what you do is you just lay it on the ground so it stays wet on the bottom, water it every once in a while, and it will sprout, and then you plant it, and in about six years, you'll be getting some coconuts, maybe even sooner. You wanna make sure that you have a coconut that has the entire husk on it. If you have just the interior, it may not grow. It's not protected. But you can see the roots come through the bottom. This part here is damp and it's starting to, you know, it's probably gonna get rotten a lot quicker than the top. 
the husk is made to float. They float up on shorelines. They lay in the sand. They get half buried, hopefully a little ways up the shore where they don't get washed out again. They put the roots down. They put a shoot up. And next thing you know, you have a tropical postcard. Take your coconut, put it halfway in the ground, get it wet, boom, you're going to have a coconut tree. Our next amazing tree is coffee. And it's probably the most amazing tree of all because without it, I wouldn't have enough energy to do this video. Coffee is very easy to grow from seed, but like citrus, it's a tropical, so you don't wanna dry those seeds out for very long and let them, let them get old. And if you go to the store and you buy yourself a bag of coffee beans, they're almost certainly not going to sprout. Some of my readers have tried growing green coffee beans, they've tried growing roasted coffee beans, and they don't sprout. They just don't sprout. You have to get some seed right from the fruit and plant them. And if it's cool or cold, they're not gonna wanna grow. What I would do when I had my plant nursery was I had a big potted coffee in my greenhouse that would fruit every fall and winter. And I would go and pick those little beans, split them open, wash them off a little bit, wash the little seeds on the inside out. There's a cherry that has beans inside. So you're basically just splitting the cherry part off, taking the little beans out of the middle, wash them off, stick them in a little potting soil, and then I had a little heating mat. And I put the heating mat underneath and that kept them in the 80s. And I would just sprout them in my office. And they would grow in about a month to two months. I would have lots of little coffee seedlings. You just plant them in pots, don't let them freeze, and you can get coffee in as little as three years. One of the coolest thing I ever grew from seed was date palms. I went on a picnic with my family once and I bought a box of California dates. And we ate the dates and I said, kids, save the seeds. Let's see if we can sprout these. And so we saved the seeds. We took home a little napkin full of date seeds. I washed them and I read that they don't like it too wet and they don't like it cold at all. They like it hot. Remember, this is an arid, warm, warm climate, kind of a desert tree more than anything else. So what I did was I got a little bit of sand. I, I soaked the dates, the date seeds, just to kind of wake them up. And then I planted them in some slightly moist sand. And I put them in a little container on top of the water heater in my closet. And out of a package of dates, we probably had 20 or 30 seeds that were in the planter. Out of those 20 to 30 seeds, I got about six little baby date palms. Couldn't believe it, but it was the coolest thing ever. So that is how you do it. Just put them in something, just soak them once, just to get them started. Put them in a little bit of slightly moist medium, stick them on top of your water heater or someplace warm, and just wait. And when they took, I mean, they literally, they took like two, three, four months before they all sprouted. But the rest of them that hadn't sprouted at that point, I said, okay, you're just done. They maybe would have sprouted, but I was done with the experiment. But it was enough, I got some dates, and I actually planted them in my Florida yard. Our next amazing tree bears the largest fruit known to man. It's the jackfruit, and the fruit can be up to 80 pounds. It's a relative of mulberries, breadfruit, and figs, which makes it kind of awesome. But it's also very easy to start from seed. And the jackfruit is a big old fruit like this. And it's got a fibrous white interior. And inside of that are these really sweet bits of fruit. And inside each of those little arils is a delicious seed that you can boil and eat. However, if you would rather not boil and eat it, but grow yourself another tree, take one of those out. They're like a big bean and plant them right away. They're kind of soft. They're not a hard shelled seed. And like a lot of tropical plants, you want to put it right in the ground right away. You don't want to let it sit and dry out. After a few weeks, those things are going to die. So you put it right in to a pot and give yourself a pot that has a deep bottom to it because they make a big tap root and they don't like transplanting very much. So if you actually have the climate for it, what I would recommend is to dig yourself a little spot in your yard, put some rocks or something around it to mark it, plant a handful of jackfruit seeds, maybe stick four or five in the hole with a little bit of compost. You don't even have to have compost, but I compost everything, water them well, and just watch. And within about a month, you'll have multiple sprouts show up there. When they get a little bit bigger, maybe about this tall, pick the very best one of that batch and cut the rest of them down and let that one become your jackfruit tree. And jackfruit actually grow very, very fast. And you can bear fruit in about four to six years. Our next tree is the loquat. I love this fruit. 
It grows on an absolutely beautiful tree, and I like it so much that it was part of the logo for my old plant nursery. I love loquats, and they grow in climates where some more tropical fruits won't go. It's kind of an in-between temperate and tropical fruit. It's also called the Japanese plum. It's sweet, tart, there are improved varieties and there are seedling varieties, but pretty much every loquat tree is gonna bear something that's pretty good. So, how do you grow loquats? It's another one of those ones where you have to get the fresh seeds. Don't dry them out. They're almost like, kind of like an avocado pit or something. Like you peel it and there's a little bit there's, there's the, the little green embryo inside and a little brown skin over it, but it's not a hard skin. It's the little pit, there's usually a couple of pits in each seed. You take it, you plant it, and in about a month, it's going to come up. Now, if you get a loquat and you say, oh, this one's kind of sour, I don't really like it all that much, that can just be a rootstock because loquats, like apples, graft very, very easily. From seed, you're probably looking at about four to six years before you get fruit. It's well worth it, and it's a beautiful tree. Our next tree is mango, one of my very favorite fruits, along with all the other favorite fruits that I've mentioned so far. Mango is really easy to start from seed. It's not really great at staying true to type, but it's well worth growing anyhow. I've had seedling mangoes before. Sometimes they're a little stringy, sometimes they're a little turpentiney but they also can be grafted very easily, and they're so much fun to watch growing that I would totally do it. Back when I worked a mind-numbing office job, I actually started a mango seedling on the windowsill in my office. I had a mango that I'd eaten for lunch, stuck it in one of these little pots of dirt, and a month later I came in after the weekend, and boom, there was this little tree there. And it grows so fast that it'll blow your mind because there's a ton of energy saved inside of that big mango pit. Now the easy way to get them to sprout is to trim that hard outer part of the pit off and take the little soft embryo part out of the inside and plant it. Now some of, some of them are monoembryonic and some of them are polyembryonic. And from what I've heard, if they're polyembryonic, which means they put up multiple shoots from one pit, that type usually is more true to type. So if you had a really good fruit and you planted it and it's polyembryonic, you get a bunch of little shoots, just select one of them and let it grow and it's probably going to be like the mama. If it's monoembryonic, you're on your own, and you better learn how to graft. Mangoes will produce in about four to six years, and they can make a massive tree, 60 to 80 foot tall, but you can also prune it way down, and it will respond quite well, and you can keep it at eight to 12 feet. Right here, I have a pod of Moringa olifera, the miracle tree, also known as the drumstick tree. Moringa has these little winged seeds and they keep for a while, not super long, maybe a year or so. All you gotta do to grow Moringa is to plant these seeds in the ground. They germinate very readily, but they like to have some bottom heat. If you live in a cool area, they won't come up, they'll just rot in the ground. Another thing is, the seedlings are very subject to rot, so you wanna make sure that when you plant your Moringa seeds, you don't overwater them, they'll die. They grow very, very quickly, and they can actually start producing flowers and pods of their own within a year from planting. If you live in a northern climate, you can buy seeds, turn around and plant them, and use them as a green vegetable. Leaves are edible, and they're very nutritious for you. Super simple to grow. Pop it in the ground, make sure it's warm enough, don't overwater it, and you're gonna have Moringa trees. Our next tree, rather like the banana, is not a tree at all. This is a papaya, sometimes called a pawpaw, but we're gonna cover the true pawpaw next. Papaya has these beautiful seeds in the inside. Isn't that a gorgeous fruit? It's very delicious, and it's very, very easy to start from seed. Now, when I have papaya, all I do is scoop these seeds out, stick them where I want them to grow, and water them. Or, I'll take them, put them in some potting soil, I'll just scoop the guts out and just throw them right in. And then they'll all sprout, or a big chunk of them will sprout within a month or so. And when they sprout, I select out the very best looking ones, trim the rest of them down, and usually I'll get five or six per pot. When they get about a foot tall, I transplant them to where I want them to go, into other pots or to right in the ground. Or I'll just put a handful right in the ground where I want it to grow, and they'll grow. Just got to remember not to knock them down or step on them, so I mark them out. They uh, will produce, usually, fruit within a year, and if you have a cooler climate where they go kind of halfway dormant, it might take a year and a half to two years. They're very fast and they're very productive. 
Our next tree is the true pawpaw, not Carica papaya, but Asamina triloba. This is a northern climate shade tolerant tree that makes beautiful fruit and it thinks it's a tropical tree because the rest of its family lives in the tropics and somehow it ended up up north. Now, like a lot of tropical trees, even though it's not a tropical, it doesn't like to have the seeds dry out. So in order to grow pawpaw, what you have to do is actually get fresh seeds, like scoop them out of a pawpaw or find somebody on eBay that has good ratings who is selling fresh pawpaw seeds. Take those fresh seeds, put them in a little, you know, wash them off, put them in a little baggie of soil, stick them in your refrigerator for four to five months, and then plant them out in the spring. Papa is coming into ripening in the end of summer and into fall. So you're going to take them then and you're going to just stick them in the fridge. And you can leave them in the fridge the entire winter. It doesn't matter. Or if you have a colder climate, you can pick a spot and plant them right in the ground. But the important part is don't let them dry out or they will die. A lot of people have written and said, ah, my papa didn't come up. And I said, well, you need them fresh. And when you try them fresh, they do come up. I had great success in my nursery business growing pawpaw from seed and then turning around and selling the trees. Now, once you actually have them sprouted and growing, they have long tap roots, a lot like the jackfruit. So make sure you put them in deep pots and plant them out as soon as you can. If you can grow them right in the space where you want them to grow later, do that. Put them in a little bit of light shade right where you want them to grow. Stick those seeds in the ground after they come out of the fridge. And then in spring, they're going to sprout about a month later and in about three to five years you should be getting yourself some pawpaws of your own. Our next tree is peaches and this is one of my all-time success stories in growing fruit trees from seed. I grew dozens and dozens of peach trees from seed and I gave a ton of them away. I, tr I kept track of some of them. Some of them I grew in my yard and they all made good peaches. Every one that I ever saw again made good peaches. They're very easy and they're very fast. 18 months. 18 months from a pit. I actually got a couple of peaches, which is ridiculous. It's an outlier. But generally you're looking at about two, three, four years. But pretty much three years is pretty common. In order to start peaches from seed, take your pit. You can either crack it open and take the little almond looking seed out of the inside, or you can plant the entire thing. I had higher germination rates when I just cracked the pits and took the little kernels out of the inside. But both ways will work. Take it, soak it overnight in some water, and then Take it and put it into some slightly moist potting soil, like in a little Ziploc bag, and stick it in your refrigerator. In about three months, they'll start growing roots, and it's amazing. You just have roots coming out of these little pits. And you just take it at that point, plant it in a pot, and put it out on your porch. Now, if you're afraid that the winter is still going to be too harsh, don't worry about it. These things were designed to go through the winter. So stick it in a pot, put it on your porch. When it starts to warm up, boom, a little peach tree will come out and it'll just pop up out of the top and they grow very, very fast, like six feet a year, and they fruit very quickly. So you're probably looking at two to five years and you're gonna have peaches, but almost certainly within three. Pecans and walnuts, they're actually related. Both of them grow in a very similar fashion and both of them take about a decade to produce from seed. So this is a long-term plan for long-term thinkers. But much like peaches, all you gotta do is take the nut, soak it, Actually, if any of them float, throw those out. Those are probably no good. So take the ones that sink, take them and stick them in some moist potting soil, put them in the fridge four to five months, and then plant them out in pots or stick them right in the ground. They do make tap roots. They don't like transplanting very much. So the best thing to do is just stick them right in a spot where you want them to grow. And if you're afraid that they're not gonna sprout and grow, just plant two, three, four, or five, and then cut the ones you don't want and let them grow, but give them lots of space in between because they may be tiny now, but they're gonna be huge later. Our next tree is plum. There are a whole bunch of varieties of plums. There are Japanese plums, there are wild plums, Chickasaw plum, but basically they have the same kind of germination method. Just like peaches, take the little pit, soak it a little bit, stick it in a little bit of slightly moist potting soil or sand or some other medium, stick it in your fridge, three to four or five months, the roots start growing out, you plant them, and boom, they start to grow. And you can expect plums in about three to five years from seed. So that's pretty good. And if you don't like what you get, plums are another one that's super easy to graft. I remember going to an exhibition of pre-Raphaelite paintings and seeing one of a woman eating a pomegranate. It was absolutely beautiful. Both the woman was beautiful and the pomegranate was beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful fruits in the world and it's an ancient fruit. 
and it's also very easy to start from seed. I started a dwarf pomegranate and it ha I had it fruiting in like two years from seed. But for the larger varieties, it takes about three to five years. All you do with pomegranates, you don't have to worry about chill period or any of that stuff. They grow all the way into the tropics, so they're totally fine being planted right away. Just scrub the seeds clean, dry them out on a little paper towel after they've dried for a couple of days, plant them in a pot, they come up in a few weeks, you're gonna have some pomegranates. But you're on your own with finding the beautiful girl. Soursop. Soursop is a remarkable tropical fruit which has become well known for the ability of its leaves to fight cancer. So a lot of people that have been studying cancer and soursop leaves have discovered that this is a potent anti-cancer herb as well as being an excellent fruit. Soursop is a tropical tree. It's actually related to the true pawpaw of North America, Asamina triloba, and it grows a nice big spiky fruit about like this. And in order to start it, like we keep coming back to, it's a tropical fruit. You don't let those seeds dry out and sit for very long. They can keep for maybe three to six months, but your best just taking them from the plant, or from, right from the fruit, get a fruit in the market, clean some of the seeds off, plant them in pots. About a month later, you get little soursop shoots, and they're gonna start growing, and then you pot them out. If you live in a colder climate, you're not gonna get fruit, but you will be able to grow some of them indoors with proper care and at least get the leaves. Our next tree is a fun one. It's the tropical almond, and if you're a beach bum, you may have found some of the little seeds washed up on shore. It's a very common drift seed. They have spread all around the equator and up into the subtropics by drifting to the shores and planting themselves. It's a beautiful, large tropical tree. The, the fruit has a little bit of a slightly edible exterior, but inside of it is really the best part. And it's a little nut that tastes like an almond, but it's actually not related to almond at all. Now this is another tropical tree, but this one is actually made to stay in stasis for a long time as it floats on the salt water. So this one can keep for quite a while. I have found seeds washed up on the shore and just I'll take a handful of them, put them in a pot, put them under a couple inches of soil, and then just keep it moist. And eventually at least one or two of them sprout and I take those and plant them out. There's a beautiful one in my parents' side yard that I planted a few years ago and it bore little almonds in 18 months. That's a really awesome and fast tree. Our next and our last, our very final tree is a really weird one that is so cool. This tree is the West Indian locust, also known as the stinking toe, which is a terrible name for it. It has a little bit of an interesting aroma but this is a traditional bush food through Central America. West Indian locust has a kind of, it's almost a flower on the inside of it, which is high in protein, high in minerals, and high in starches. And it's also quite delicious. It tastes a lot like a graham cracker, but it's in the bean and pea family, and it has seeds inside of this flesh, which we're gonna have to clean out of here. The wood is super hard, it's almost indestructible, it's impenetrable to a lot of insects, and it is also the source of amber. Remember, there would be no Jurassic Park without the West Indian locust. So how do you grow these things from seed? Well, I'll tell you in a minute, because first I gotta get the seeds out of this thing. Now I've got two seeds cleaned off here. What I'm gonna do, put a nick right into the side of the seed because they have a very hard coat. And you may be thinking, David the Good, why in the world are you showing us such an obscure plant? There's no way I'm ever gonna have those seeds in my entire life and I just don't care. Well, the reason I'm using this tree, other than the fact that it's awesome and I just like throwing you guys for weird loops, is that many bean and pea tree seeds like black locust or Lucana leucocephala or others, they have really hard seeds. And if you have any seeds that are super hard, you can do this trick to get them to grow. This is a really common trick. So what you do is you put a good notch in the side. You can do this with a piece of pair of nail clippers on some things, but I find that just using the corner edge of a file 
You know, you put your little file marks into it. Just do at least one down into where you start to see the white inside the seed. Then you take them, now that you've scored them, put them in a little water. And now all we gotta do is soak them overnight. They'll start to swell, the seed coats will start to break, and then you plant them. Once they start to swell up a little bit, you know you did well. If they don't swell up, go back, make your notch a little deeper, and try again and see if they start to swell and that seed coat starts to crack a little bit. Then all you gotta do is plant it and wait. And in the case of West Indian locust, it's gonna take just a couple of weeks after doing this for them to come up. I hope I've gotten you excited about the possibilities. Growing your own fruit and nut trees from seed is one of the most exciting and satisfying things you can do. Yes, it takes a little bit of time, but that investment in the future is fantastic. It's a lot of fun, and there's nothing like picking fruit from a tree that you grew yourself from a little tiny seed. The whole thing is a miracle. And you're, I hope you're gonna start seeing every fruit stand as a place to go looting and find little seeds that you can take home and plant. I mean, the seeds are everywhere. How many seeds have you thrown away over the course of your life? Probably millions. If you planted them all, there would be no place left on planet Earth to live for humans. So just plant a few and get started and you're gonna have a lot of fun. If you'd like to learn more about growing plants and trees for money, check out my book. It's just a short book called The Easy Way to Start a Home-Based Plant Nursery and Make Thousands in Your Spare Time. I wrote it back when I had a plant nursery in the United States, um, which was successful for very little bit of money. Um, I, I was just like redneck propagating, just starting all kinds of things from seeds, starting things from cuttings, doing everything on a shoestring budget. And much to my surprise, with a little bit of marketing, I was quite successful. And you can do the same thing, and all of it's there in that book. You can pick up the book on Amazon, or you can find it at my website, thesurvivalgardener.com. And now, for something absolutely free, check out my composting guide, which we're giving away with the Grow Network. And that is in the link. You'll see the little ad for it. That is five easy ways to start composting right away. Stop throwing stuff in the landfill. Stop, stop worrying about all the bazillion rules that you see. and and nitrogen and carbon and can you throw paper in and can you throw meat in and learn to start composting like nature does. It's so easy that anybody can do it. So go and get it. I made it for you guys to get for free so go get it for free and enjoy it and I hope it gets you composting and stopping throwing the good stuff in the landfill. I mean after all you're gonna need it to feed your new fruit trees right? Thanks for joining me. It's good to see you all and until next time may your thumbs always be green. Went to see David, David the Good. We listened to Portis Head and drank spiced rum. Do you throw banana peels in the trash? Are your coffee grounds also being thrown in the trash? Do you compost ham? <laughs> Are you sick and tired of all the rules about composting? Do you wish you could compost in a super easy way? And stop throwing things in a landfill? And stop being a terrible person? Click on the link below and sign up and get my new composting booklet, which shows you how to compost easily and simply with hardly any, any work at all. It's insane how easy it is because it follows natural principles. Sign up now, quantities are not limited. You want some grapefruit? It's good.